and it's easy as that. Basically, I have to bleep it out, which is so easily done. How you do it, as you just saw. Kitty Mommy has to edit. Welcome back to my channel and happy Friday, April 17th and happy quarantine day 35, I believe. Now I was about to sit down to start editing my next video to go up tomorrow because one already went live today. And if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, my name is Marissa and I've been posting a video every day during quarantine. So if you guys are bored and you have nothing to do, definitely subscribe down below because at least you'll have something to do. Watch a video every day. And also don't forget to follow me over on Instagram while you're at it. But enough of that. Today I was thinking that I would take you along my editing journey because a lot of you guys have been asking me how I do edit my videos, especially like how I edit my thumbnails, how I make my intro. Like there's so many things that you guys have wanted to know about my process here on YouTube. So I'm going to give you guys the inside scoop of how I edit my YouTube videos using Final Cut Pro. And we're going to go through everything, like from start to finish, how do I edit a video for YouTube? And then basically we're going to expand on the series of doing different things for YouTube. So if you guys have any recommendations, please let me know down below. But today we're starting with editing. So let's get to it because this is going to take a while. Some of my videos I can get done in like two to three hours. Other ones I spend seven or eight hours editing. It just depends on the kind of video, how long the footage is, and how intricate I want to edit. But today I'm going to be editing a generic vlog and sharing with you how I do what I do. <laughs> so this is where the magic happens. This is where I do all of my editing at my desk here. And I did just want to show you some of the things that I use to edit before we dive in. So of course I'm using my laptop. I do have a MacBook Pro, the new one with the little like touch bar at the top. I bought this at the beginning of the year. For me, I love to edit using a mouse so I'm using this Logitech mouse which hooks up to my laptop through this USB here that I have plugged in all the time my laptop sits on this little tray that I will link down below I'll link all of these things down below so that way I have somewhat good posture while I edit for hours and because my laptop is up here I do use a wireless Apple keyboard so that way I can do all of my stuff separate here I don't know if anybody else does this but I also have a wireless Apple mouse that I use as my trackpad when I'm editing because I do need to be able to swipe kind of like I would on a trackpad but since my trackpad is up there I use this as my trackpad I did buy this to use as a mouse but side note I have really bad carpal tunnel so using this mouse hurts my hand more than this one so I ended up just keeping this one to use as a trackpad and I have kept using this one for my mouse stuff <laughs> this is my external drive that I use that holds all of my footage as well as my final cut libraries I do have a couple of these that I've started using I keep footage on them I've labeled them I highly recommend using one if you don't it helps save a lot of storage on your actual computer and then the last thing that I use is this dongle which is the Apple SD card dongle so it plugs into my ports so I can plug my SD card in and get my footage off of my camera so the first step in editing a video at least for me and I'm sure for other content creators is to get all of the footage from your camera to your laptop and that is what I use the dongle for that I already showed you and then I drag all of my footage that I need into my external drive and here's a look into my external drive I do organize all of my videos into different folders that way all of it stays organized of course and at the top you'll see my libraries within my final cut so I do have my bloopers library that I keep all of my bloopers in so that way I can upload that video whenever I want I have my channel footage which is basically my intros and outros that I keep saved there that way I can add them to the beginning and ends of my videos easier so I don't have to remake those and then March through 2020 is basically this library that I have starting in March through blank of 2020 because like I said I save all of my footage on external drives so once this one is full I move on to the next one and I will label that March through April 2020 if that's what it gets me through or March through May 2020 whatever it is today's video we're gonna be editing Griffin and I's date day that we had or we like scheduled a day that we wanted to have a date or just get ready and do all of those things I already uploaded the Q&A of that video but today we want to edit the vlog from that day now this isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial of Final Cut. I'm assuming that you guys know the basics of that. If not, I would look it up. But of course we'll go through things that I'm doing, but I'm not going to teach you how to use Final Cut, just to let you guys know. So I'm going to open my March library. I already have my date day folder on here that I'm going to start editing. This is my project. Once I click on it, it loads down here. This is all the footage that I've already inputted into the event. I haven't edited it yet. I haven't done anything to it. Kitty Mommy has to edit. She's usually here anytime I'm editing. She likes to lay right here all over my keyboard and all over my hands and force me to pet her. Now for me, my editing process usually goes in phases. And phase one is the rough edit that I like to call it or the rough cut, which basically means I'm going to go through and get rid of any footage that I know I'm not going to be 
using in the vlog or the video. And whenever I have friends watch me edit, they're always so confused when I do this part because they don't understand what I'm editing out. They're like, how do you know what you're cutting out? How do you know what you're doing? I don't understand what you're doing. After I tell them, it's very like, oh, that makes sense. But looking at it, it might not seem obvious, I guess. This is my opening clip where I'm doing my, hey y'all, what's up kind of thing. You can see the wavelengths right here. There's nothing. And those wavelengths, this audio portion is where I'm talking. So my rough edit is basically going through and deleting everything where I'm not talking. And so I would be cutting out this whole beginning part that has nothing. Sometimes this can take a while. For my sit down videos, typically it takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to do my rough edit. For my vlogs, it doesn't take that long because typically for a vlog, I'm only recording when I want to. And so there's not as many lulls in it, but I still do the same steps. Now, as we edit, especially for vlogs, I come across little bits like this where it's just me and Griffin eating. So this kind of footage is what I turn into a time lapse. My camera doesn't film in a time lapse mode that automatically like speeds it up as some cameras do. So what I do to edit that is I of course just film a normal clip. It gets inputted into here. I always drop down the audio because I'm going to put music over it so I don't want to hear anything that's going on. So I'm going to drop down the audio and then I always make it super fast. I'm going to speed it up 20 times. I also only want it to last usually about 15 seconds is what my time lapse lasts for me. And so I'm going to drag that down just to make it 15 seconds. Once I've gone through my rough cut of my vlog, I basically start back over and edit it again. But this time I'm looking out for areas that I need to add any kind of overlays, sound effects, um, if I want to do my little like zoom in, zoom out kind of thing, or if I'm trying to add some sort of special effects text over the video, that's what I'm doing on my like second watch through. Specifically here at the beginning, I always do my like, hey all what is up, happy Tuesday. And you guys know that I put on my happy Tuesday and it dings and the text comes up. To add that kind of stuff in, one, I of course make that externally. I use the app Sketchbook to do that overlay. And basically I used like a stylus and I write out whatever words I want over this transparent background. I load it into my final cut and that's how I basically use it. In my documents, I also have some sound effects that I use frequently. The ding itself is also one that I got offline that I just kind of like save as a little sound effect that I'll just input into my Final Cut Pro whenever I use it. And so we're just gonna drag in Thursday. And as you see, it's just transparent. It goes right over it. And then I'm going to drag in my sound effect, which is the ding that I always use. And I just lined it up to happen right at the same time. So when we watch it back, happy Thursday, April 16th. There you have it. Now moving forward and part of my intro as well, I like to add for like comedic effect, little parts where like it zooms in and then it goes back to normal just to kind of like emphasize something that I'm saying. And so right here is where I would do one of those things. Two days after the 31st, I'm losing my mind. But today's video is super fun because yeah, I'm losing my mind in butt. So for that, I basically highlight that area. I make sure that it's blocked off only for the area that I want it to happen to. So only for I'm losing my mind. In the transform area, I scale it to about 120 is my like first kind of scale. And then I also want the butt after it to be scaled but not bigger, I just wanted to come back out. So we're gonna make it 110. And so here's what it looks like. Two days after the 31st, I'm losing my mind. But today's video is super fun because, but that is how I do my little like snap zooms in a way. Obviously you can do it with the lens, but sometimes if I'm not doing that, I just make that effect in Final Cut. Now sometimes during the beginning of my video, kind of within my intro of the video, I will say what the main video is about. And every now and again, you'll see that I'll input text kind of like this. So that way it goes along with what I'm saying. It's more so just for emphasis and for or just like visual appealingness of the video. And so here's how I do that because I'm gonna do it here in this video because the whole video itself is a quarantine date day and I said that right here. And so I kind of want to emphasize that. So here's what it looks like before. So we decided to have a quarantine like date day and all I'm gonna do is find out where each word starts. And I'm gonna kind of cut the footage that way I can see the clear points that I'm gonna add that text over top of it. After I've cut my sections, we have quarantine, date, and day. I'm going to go over to my text area and I just use the basic title and I'm gonna cut it to the full length that I want it to. We're gonna start with the first one because it's easier for me to pick all of the specifications of this one text title and then I can just copy and paste it rather than doing it every time. So to start with this one, we're obviously just gonna say quarantine. We're gonna type it out. I usually use the text Arial and then I do bold italic. Usually make it about a 100 point font, maybe bigger. And then I always turn on the drop shadow and then we're going to copy it and I'm gonna paste it at each little area that I want those words to start at. And of course we're gonna 
gonna trim those down and then change the text of them. And then we're gonna move them around so that way you can obviously see all of them. So when you watch it back, it looks like this. So we decided to have a quarantine like date day and that's literally it. If at any point throughout my videos I'm mentioning another video, I like to kind of highlight that so that way people see like, oh, maybe I should go watch that video. So sometimes I will put in the thumbnail in the bottom corner in post-production, like when I'm uploading it, I'll have that card pop up. If you guys know those little eyes that are in the videos, I'll post one right now. I usually have those match up so that way people are seeing the thumbnail. It says suggested you should watch this video and it might get them to go and watch that video. Or I will input footage from that video over top of this video. So you can hear my audio of me talking about the video, but you'll see the actual video and still do the same thing with the little eye card. So that way people can watch the video, like watch a little preview, they click on it and they wanna go watch it. So I do both either way, but today I wanna input footage from the Get Ready With Me that I'm mentioning in this video over top of my video. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now, usually when I put other images on my videos, I use like the same little pink starry background. It's kind of like a branded thing. Now I made that completely separate and I'm not gonna go into like how I made it, but I do keep it in my documents and I'm going to pull that into the video. So that way I have my background here. And then basically all I'm gonna do is go to my Final Cut library, go to my Q&A video, and I'm just gonna pull some footage from that to showcase over there. I'm just gonna copy this. We're gonna go back to date day and I'm going to paste it here. I want it to be on top of my pink overlay. So what I'm gonna do is just drag it above it. So as you can see, there's two layers here. But right now, all you see is the video. I do want a little border of my starry background to show. So basically I'm gonna click on it and we're gonna do the scale. And to make it bigger, you of course go bigger than 100, but I want it to go smaller so that way we can see the border. And 90 honestly looks good to me. I just want a small little border. And I'm going to drag down the audio of this one because again, we don't wanna hear what's coming from the video. We want the audio that I was talking about in this video. So to do that, you're gonna drag the video that you want the audio for below. So you have again another layer. But to me, like that's not enough. I think that sound effects are really what kind of like tie it together and make it seem more artistic. I don't even know what words you would use, but basically I will add some sort of sound effect in. Sometimes I do my little like pop screen. Sometimes I do the click screen. I kind of flip between them. But for this one, I wanna use a mouse click sound effect, which I just keep in my documents here. And so I'm gonna drag that down here and we're also gonna have it on the other side. So now it has a little more oomph to it. To make it even better if you wanted to, there's an effect in Final Cut called the camcorder that I can drag over top of my footage here. So that way it has like the recording little look to it. And in this effect, you can actually change like the text in the corner that shows up next to the recording. And so I'm gonna change it to get ready with me. And so then this is what the final little insert clip looks like. Get ready with me. So if you guys haven't already seen that, I will link it for you so you guys can go and watch that because I straightened my hair and there you have it. Now, other than the text that I put over for like the title of the video kind of thing, sometimes I put text in little side notes that I wanna make or like commentaries, or in this case, I said the wrong word, so I wanna like pop something up there so you guys know what I meant to say. But that process is exactly the same. I literally do the same thing. I just change the font size of it. I'm still gonna use the Arial bold italic, and I usually just keep it the 63 font with the drop shadow, so that way it's easier to see. But that's how I add my little like commentaries. I basically try to find where I want it, and then I only have it on there for like a split second. That's kind of what makes it more funny, so that maybe you guys have to rewind or like pause it to see what I was trying to say. And this is how this one looks. This man never sounds exciting for everything. So sometimes I wanna like zoom in on something specific not so much just like a full page zoom, which I already showed you guys how I do for that like comedic effect. But there's this part right here that I wanna like emphasize what Griffin's saying. And so I want the camera to be only on him. And to do that, we're gonna use like the crop tool. And so if I hover over the area that I want to be zoomed in, I'm gonna click this crop tool and make sure I'm in the crop mode. And that way I can edit and crop where I want my camera or like the area to be showing. And I put that just on Griffin. and that that way, when we watch it, it looks like this. Ow! <laughs> Worth it. There are a couple different transitions that I use throughout my videos for different things. So I'm just gonna walk you through all of them right here. Now, this area is kind of like a scene change or like a longer time period kind of scene change. And for that, I usually use these transitions that I saved and like imported into my Final Cut. So these don't come with Final Cut, but they're my diagonal slides. I just drag that over the clips that I want it to be. Normally it's a really long transition, so it looks like this. But I don't want it to be like that, so I always drag it to make it super small. So I want it to be super fast. And then I go to my sound effects and I also imported this sound effect so that way I could use it for this specifically. And it's just like a sweeping sound effect so that way when you put them together, it looks like this. 
and that's my regular transition now another kind of transition I use is kind of like my pop transition but it's just a green screen so I have it saved in my documents I'm gonna drag that onto my video here and for this to look the way that I want it to I do increase the speed but I do it customized and I do 150% and this is just for this specifically and then in the effects there is something called keyer which is how you do green screens on Final Cut so if I drag that over and put it into my green screen the green part obviously disappears so now all you see is the pop which is what I want and then I use a sound effect that is in Final Cut which is just a bottle cork because since it's like a popping green screen I like the popping sound effect to go with it and I'm just gonna drag that under the video and so then this transition looks like this and those are my two transitions that I normally use there's also another effect that I do on my videos which is kind of again for comedic effect like if I'm doing something like ah, and you see the screen going like ah, like as you just saw basically how I do that is using the transform tool within Final Cut Pro I'm first going to block off the area of the video that I want that to apply to so here's this area I'm gonna start at the beginning and then I'm gonna click this transform tool but it's this little icon right here I'm gonna click it that allows me to basically change something about each frame of the video at the beginning of the frame as you can see over here we're at 100% there's nothing wrong with it everything's good and normal and I'm just gonna click the right arrow until I get to the end of that chunk and then I'm gonna change my scale so I'm gonna make it probably like 200 but as you can see it's also cutting off half of my face so what I also can do is hold and click this little icon here in the middle and drag my screen to wherever I want it to so I'm gonna make my face like centered when I watch it back it looks like this <gasps> You can obviously make it as fast as you'd like. You can make it go wherever you want. And that's basically how you do it. Now we're back at the area that I time-lapsed earlier. But when I do time-lapses, I also like to do kind of like a slow, gradual zoom in effect on those that way you're not just staring at like a stagnant screen and that's called the ken burns effect that i use at least which is so easily done all you want to do is click on the clip that you're wanting this effect to happen to and then if you click on the crop tool again there's an area for ken burns and it automatically comes up with like a standard start and end you can of course change this if you wanted to zoom in more or this little arrow will flip it so that way it's going to start in and zoom out so you can pick whatever you'd like i usually just keep with the standard but sometimes i do move them but that's literally how you do the Ken Burns. And that way when it starts, it's gonna start normal screened. And then by the time you get to the end of what we made the 15 seconds, it's slowly zooming in. So that way it just has some sort of depth change that's more interesting to watch. Now inside this video, there is a small like blooper-ish part of it that I wanna keep in, but to kind of separate it from the video, I like to use this like static screen that looks like this. And to get that, all I did was go onto YouTube and search like VHS static screen or something like that. And I found a video of it. I just saved the video, downloaded it off of YouTube, and then cut it to like the length that I usually use it for. And so all I can do is just input it into the video and it's easy as that. I'll usually add that at the beginning and the end of like the little blooper part. One other thing that I do to make it sound more bloopery is to add like fun music with it. I just found this song off YouTube. Again, I just downloaded it and I use it and I'm just gonna like drop the audio a little bit so it's not so loud and it sounds like this smile put your seatbelt under your arm <laughs> <laughs> Now this part is kind of funny, but it is a part of editing, so I'm going to include it. But if there are any parts in the video where I curse, basically I have to bleep it out. And I don't have to, but I do. I choose to do that. So here's how I do that. I basically want to isolate the curse word. And so this is this little clip here. I'm going to drag down the audio all the way so that way you don't hear it. And then within Final Cut, there is a sound effect for an answering machine. And so if you drag that underneath the clip, I basically just cut it to fit the clip that I'm wanting to bleep out, of course. And there you have the next step basically once I've edited my entire vlog I've done the rough edit I've gone back through and added all of my like overlays texts zooms all that good stuff to make it a good video now I will add in my intro and my outro which like I said before I keep in my channel footage library so I'm gonna open up that library but my outro is in my final project here my outro clip so I'm just gonna copy that take it over to my date day clip and paste it here on the end I've already made this so again I'm just kind of like posting it and I delete the beginning because it is just black and music and then I go to transitions that again I have installed myself and it's this like VHS slide down thing and just using that transition in the outro that I already made here's how like my transition to my outro looks bye
and I basically do the same thing for the intro I'm gonna go all the way to the beginning of my video here But I'm gonna copy over this intro and then I'm gonna go back to my date day paste it in and as you can see my Intro is here and then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for my outro but for my intro the same transition So there's this like blank piece here, and I'm gonna delete that that way it backs up to my video But I'm going to use my little slide down transition again drop that in there And that way my transition from my intro to my video looks like this Hey y'all, what is up? It is Marissa Nicole and welcome back to my channel. And with my rough edit, my other edit, my intro and outro put in, that only leaves one last thing to do for my videos. This changes depending on the video that I'm filming, but I will input music into my videos, whether that is a background throughout my whole video, if it's like a sit down video, or I will go to YouTube and get some copyright free music to use in my videos. Once I've found my music that I want, basically I'm downloading it and I'm putting, putting it like anything else that I have in this video, like my green screen, like that little static screen, like my sound effects, all of that kind of stuff. I just kind of drop it in wherever I want it to go. And then one thing that I do whenever I actually use my music is I always carry it over, as you can see, a little bit into the clip before. And then there's usually a little dot on it that kind of fades the music. And I always like to fade it in. And the same thing on the other side is I'll carry it out just a little bit past my effect and fade it out. That way it's not such a harsh song right at the beginning and right at the end it fades in and it fades out so it sounds more like this and there's background music and at this point with a normal video what I would do from here is do my one final watch through of the video from start to finish and make sure that everything is good squeaky clean everything's where I want it to be there's no like weird stuff that I accidentally missed and then I upload it like that's me editing a vlog I covered everything that I did in this vlog but there's definitely a few things that I didn't do in this vlog that I do when I edit so if there's any questions that you guys have about it or if you've noticed that I do something and I didn't talk about it in this let me know down below because I would love to answer them either in the comments or I'll also go through stuff on my Instagram stories for you guys after this video goes live if there's any other like tips and tricks that I have. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, you definitely should. But I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was informational, at least for like a beginner's level of how to edit videos on Final Cut. This is my basic routine of editing a vlog. If you like this video or you learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below for more videos because they're coming at you every day in quarantine and you don't want to miss them. But before I close out today's video, I'm going to read today's notable quotable which comes from Tiuna. Tiuna? I'm not sure if I said that right. I'm sorry. And there says there is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. And I really like this notable quotable because someone asked me in my Q&A they asked like what I wanted to do after graduation or like where I wanted to be kind of thing in general and I was just like I don't really know I just want to be happy. And that's so true for me. I think that it's not so much as the destination that you want to get to but it's like the journey that you take to get there that you learn so much and you grow so much from and I value those journeys. I value those experiences that I go through and honestly I just want to be happy like I really am not thriving for anything specific of course I want to accomplish things and I have goals along the way but in all I just want to be comfortable financially like within my relationship all of the things and just be happy but I love you guys so much more than you will ever know and I'll see you in my next video bye Don't know